You are now watching Fiscal TV. Good afternoon and welcome to Fiscal TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jim Caselli. On today's show, we have an overview and demonstration of the Accounts Payable Warrant Voucher Spreadsheet Upload Interface, which is INFA PO54. And we also have a video on the Fiscal Purchase Order Payment History Search. Last week, I sat down with Kim Hyun to discuss the Accounts Payable Warrant Voucher Spreadsheet Upload Interface. And let's take a look at that right now. Good afternoon, Kim. Welcome to Fiscal TV. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, Kim. Thank you for having me today as well. And before we get started with your presentation, how about giving uh, our audience a little bit of your background? Yes. Um, so, hello, everyone. My name is Kim Huynh from FSC AP team. I joined Fiscal uh, back in December 2020 under BOSD unit. Our duty is to support department with AP tickets. Um, so today's subject, we will go over the Warren Voucher Spreadsheet Upload Interface, which uh, another name for it is INFAP054. So this is the existing voucher spreadsheet upload interface that can be signed up prior to using it. This Warren Spreadsheet Upload becomes handy when department needs to create multiple vouchers in fiscal. So such spreadsheet upload is designed for direct pay voucher, non-PO voucher with ONL origin, as well as $0 manual catch-up voucher with main origin. The voucher life limitation is up to 75 and no more than 100 to prevent degraded system performance. If vouchers have 75 plus lines, the system may be unable to open voucher for changes or approving. Please note that such spreadsheet upload is not created for all replenishment processing and PO related voucher. More information can be found in Fiscal Job A 504. Okay, so just to, to repeat what you said, uh, for more information on this, we have a job aid for you, and that's Fiscal Job Aid 504. So um, prior to using this interface, the configuration and setup is required where department has uh, to submit or open an FSC ticket with a request for an interface setup and configuration before the first use of the Warren voucher spreadsheet upload. So in here, let me show the, um, the, the Excel spreadsheet that we have prepared. This is an example of how the Excel spreadsheet looks like. So in here, we do have uh, different colors in here. So the first one is the columns in blue is equivalent to voucher header on the voucher, which is from column B all the way to column AE. So department, department will enter a brief description of the corresponding values on some of the required fields, such as their business unit, the invoice number, the invoice date, supply ID, invoice amount, it will be all the way to the end, uh, et cetera. So all the required uh, fields on this blue um, color, if it's required, then department has to fill out all the information on those fields. However, if some of the, the fields are not applicable to your department, please leave blank as they might not require any values for the voucher. This interface allows the creation of regular voucher style and single voucher style only. As you can see on the current spreadsheet, there are three um, there are three invoice numbers that we're trying to create. So these are the information that we uh, enter in as the description on the required fields. The column in yellow right here is equivalent to the invoice line section on the voucher from column AF to AJ. So in this section, it includes the invoice line description and the merchandise amount fields. So Kim, on this interface, is it possible to create multiple invoice lines within the same voucher? Yes. 
This section allows the department to create multiple invoice lines for each voucher. As we can see on this example, we are trying to create the voucher with two invoice lines under column AF. And you can see it right here, one and two. It has uh, line one and two, which means that invoice line one and invoice line two has been created for invoice number in row eight. So please keep in mind that when we are adding an, any additional invoice lines to the same invoice, you are not required to copy and paste the existing voucher header information on any of those additional invoice lines. Let me scroll to the left so you can see how it's look like. So pay attention to row A and 9. We have invoice line 1 and invoice line 2. So if I scroll to the left, you can see that row 9, we have invoice number test 336. And then if we scroll all the way and if we scroll all the way to the right, you see invoice line two and lines one and two. But if you look at row nine, there is no additional voucher header that we added because it's belong to row eight. So now we can continue on uh, the next column, which is uh, the column in purple. So this column is uh, equivalent to distribution lines section on the voucher from column AK to column BG right here, as well as for the project related section. So in this section, uh, department will enter all the information on the chart field as well as uh, related project number. And uh, is this similar to the invoice line section where you're able to add multiple distribution lines within the same invoice line? Yes, Jim. So uh, as we can see on row seven right here under column AL. Seven under column AL right here. So the distribution line column, we are adding a second distrib distribution line under the same invoice line. In this case, it is under invoice line number one. So let's say if I scroll to the left, pay attention to row six and seven. So if we go to the left side, row six has one invoice number, and then we have row seven as empty because we are adding additional in distribution line to row number six. That's why you can see under uh, column AL, we have uh, distribution line one and two. So that is how the, uh, the Excel spreadsheet works. And then for that, uh, in this section, in the purple, in the purple uh, section, department is required to enter the jar field information for each distribution line. If the project is related, such project information as um, PC business unit, the project number, activity, source type are required to enter on those fields. And then if we go to the right at the end, we will see that this column in green from BH to BK, this is uh, equivalent to payments tab of the voucher where you are able to add payment message. So once we all complete, um, fill out this Excel spreadsheet, we won't use this Excel spreadsheet to upload. Instead, we will copy from row five and to row nine and paste the data to another blank Excel uh, spreadsheet in order for us to upload it into the system. So let's say from here, I will demonstrate on how to copy this spreadsheet to another Excel spreadsheet. And then after that, we will go over the process of how to uh, upload it into um, FISCAL. So from here, I will copy uh, row five from B column all the way to row nine because this includes the, the information. So when I scroll all the way to the right, make sure that I copy all the information that I fill out on this uh, 
Excel spreadsheet, even though that there is nothing that we fill out on these uh, column, but we still have to copy the whole complete uh, file. So from here, I will copy and then open another Excel spreadsheet and then I will paste it over. So from here, now when we are ready for this part, then on the we have to click on the file, save as. Department is able to save this file on uh, the location that they have uh, on their uh, PC. But for me, I will, since we are doing the demonstration, then I will copy it to my desktop. And here from here. So the file name for this one is uh, has a unique name, which is a star with four digit business unit number then underscore uh, AP054, then underscore the month, day, year, hour, and minute, underscore, and then your initial. So let me put it here so you can see how it would be safe on um, your desktop. So start with your uh, business unit. So from here we have 20254 underscore AP, 054 underscore month, which is September 13, 22. And then the hour. So right now it will be 13, 52. And then underscore my initial, which is KH. And then when we save the file, it has to be saved as a CSV comma delimited right here. So once you have everything complete here, you click on save, then the file will be on your PC. I click on yes for this part. Once the file is saved with CSV file, I will show the demonstration process in QA on how to run the Warren voucher inbound. So first of all, I will log into QA to uh, show you on how to uh, do the process. So I'm in QA page right now. I will click on this and then I will log in uh, as the department AP processor role. Let me sign in and then I will navigate to uh, classic home. And then from here, once the file, file is saved with CSV file, I will show the demonstration process on how to run the, war, the Warren voucher inbound. So in here, AP processor will navigate to the Warren voucher inbound uh, page to run, uh, upload the, uh, the uh, file. So from here, we go to main menu, fiscal process, fiscal interface, AP, and then Warren voucher inbound. So from here, um, if we already have an existing value in the system, then we can always click on search. But if we do not have one ready, then department can always uh, add uh, a new value and then create the uh, run control ID. But since we already have one, then uh, we will use this one for the, uh, to run the, um, the inbound interface process. So from here, um, we have to uh, put in the business unit and then we attach the file that we just saved in the uh, PC. But before doing all that, um, we please ensure that to verify all the data information before loading the spreadsheet into the fiscal system. Also, it is important that you do not attempt to upload a blank spreadsheet. The consequence is it can create a downstream impact issue in the next upload process. Also, if you try to create the ONL origin vouchers that is listed on the spreadsheet, you must log in with your primary user ID. 
However, if you try to create a $0 manual catch-up voucher with main origin, then you need to log in using secondary user ID. So from here, um, we will enter in the business unit for this file, which is 0250. And then for the attached file, we will click on the attached hyperlink, click on browse, and then we have to locate the file that we just saved earlier. So as from this one, so I click on this and then click open and then upload. So now we have uh, the file is ready. Then what we can do is click on run. And then click OK. Once the file is loaded successfully, where we under the run status, it has success and posted distribution status. We are able to find out the status by click on the details hyperlink right here. And then follow by view log and trace. So under this file list section, we will have um, the summary file that the system generated. So in this scenario, if we uh, click on the summary file from here, as you can see it here, this file this file give us the overall status of the upload file. Since, since the file was successfully uploaded without any error, so this summary file shows zero on the voucher um, error field right here. And Kim, how do you, uh, how would somebody go about finding out if there's an error on the upload? And if there is, where would they see those errors? Uh, yes, um, thank you for that question. So there will be a possibility that some voucher lines contain errors that are not being processed. The system will generate another file called error file. And this file will list uh, all the roles that contain errors and it's required the correction. So let's say if there is error in the, uh, the uh, Excel spreadsheet, then uh, under this view, log and trace, you will see um, another file, if you say, if you call error file. So in that case, you can click on that error file to look for the specific um, error line that you have to go back to the uh, Excel spreadsheet to make correction on it. But uh, ensure uh, that users must make corrections on the roles with errors on the Excel template. If any invoice or distribution lines are in error, the voucher will not be created. Remove all other roles for all invoices that are successfully uploaded from previous submissions. Resave the file that only contains the corrections to the error roles as a CSV file. Then re-upload the file to prevent duplicate uh, records. Okay, let me ask you a question. So the voucher created, uh, if it's uh, created and available immediately after the file run into success and posted? Uh, no, uh, it requires the voucher view back process to be run in order to create the vouchers for those invoices. Such process will happen automatically overnight. In other words, you are expected to find those voucher in fiscal system in the next business day. Department is able to locate the vouchers in the next day by navigating to the regular entry page under find an assistant value we will enter in the VU, which is the business unit number for the department. In here, we are using business unit 0250 as an example, and then the voucher source, we will be using custom interface. So once we fill out these two fields, then we will click on the search button. So here, as you can see it, uh, the system successfully generated three vouchers that were included on the upload spreadsheet with the three invoice number, which is test 334, 335, and 336. So this is one way to locate those vouchers that were successfully built overnight. There's another way that we can look up those vouchers as well, where we can go to uh, main menu, accounts payable, vouchers 
there's another way to look up those voucher um, built overnight, which is we can go to the main menu, accounts payable, reviews account information, vouchers, followed by voucher. So from here, we have more criteria to fill out on this uh, inquiry. So from here, we will put in the business unit number, which is 0250, and then to 0250. And then if we go down here, we need to look at the, uh, to make the file short, smaller file, we can also enter in the accounting date. So if we know, let's say we, um, create the Excel spreadsheet and then we upload it yesterday, then on the accounting day, we will put in the date that we upload the file. So we just did the, um, the file upload today. So I will be using the accounting day as September 13, 2022. And to September 13, 2022. And then under the voucher source, make sure that we use custom interfaces. So once we fill out this information, then we click on search. And then pay attention that on this uh, voucher inquiry, the maximum rows that we generated is 300. So now we click on search and then, oh, that's really quick, okay. So now, you, as you can see it here, there are three vouchers with the, the same invoice number as we, uh, upload their spreadsheet earlier. Uh, so that, that is how department can locate the voucher ID on the next business day when the, um, the Excel spreadsheet um, automatically uh, run overnight. And this is conclude the demonstration of this uh, spreadsheet interface. Kim. Thank you so much for that presentation. I'm sure all of our Fiscal end users appreciate it. So once again, thanks to you for being with us today and thanks for the uh, demonstration. Thank you, Jim, for having me today as well. Thank you. Once again, I'd like to thank Kim for providing that info and of course the demo. If you have any questions or need any clarification regarding the non-PO warrant voucher interface, Again, that's INFAPO54. Please refer, please refer to Fiscal Job Aid 504 or feel free to submit an FSC ticket and the team will be happy to assist you. Next, we have a video for you regarding the Fiscal Purchased Order Payment History Search. This history search was created to provide the payment history of fiscal generated purchase orders. The benefits include transparency of public information and assistance. It also allows departments, suppliers, and subcontractors to track payment dates and history while being easily accessible on Cal eProcure whenever needed. Let's take a look at the video now. Welcome to the Fiscal Purchase Order Payment History Search. Let's search for payments relating to your purchases or contracts. Click on the Fiscal Purchase Order Payment History link. Welcome to the Overview page. Let's choose a field and start our search. How about Supplier ID? Wow, that's a lot. Let's narrow the results by adding a department. Let's include a subcontractor as a final filter. That narrowed it down nicely. Now you can right click on details to see payment or subcontractor information. Select Drill Through, then choose which details you need for your report. Welcome to the Invoice Details page. 
where you can view the payment information and status. Click back to return to the overview page. What if I want to restart my search? Can I just delete the values I put in? You can, but make sure to use the erase icon. What if I don't know the supplier ID number? You can use full or partial names to refine your searches. For more details, check out our detailed how-to guide. Have fun and thanks for watching. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank Kim Hewen for being with us and providing that information and demo. And if you would like to see this or any of our Fiscal TV shows, you can find them on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to let your colleagues know about us. And from everyone here at Fiscal TV, thanks for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you in October right here on Fiscal TV. You've been watching Fiscal TV. To view this and other episodes of Fiscal TV, please subscribe and follow our YouTube channel.